One of them could probably work as a doctor actually instead of the train oil cooker so that we can start training a proper medic. And then we just send this colonist around from city to city as we get proper medics until he becomes an actual medic. I think that's a good idea because this train oil cooker is of very little use at the moment. We would need to build a dry dock and then a whaling ship. We to do that, we have to build a town hall first. Oh yes, yeah, so I was planning to make gunpowder here in Pearly Gates. That sounds good to me. We'll do that in a little while. Make an oil cooker. Let's have you maybe grow some horses. Actually, maybe we could convert. Let's see here, sugar. I want to do... Yeah, I'd like to do, continue doing sugar. I was kind of hoping that there would be some hemp growth there in order for us to make ropes and stuff. I think what we'll do is we'll have the three colonists work on horses at the moment and we can train him to be a master rancher. The train or cooker will have him just do some horse work as well. There's not much else that you can actually do. With the pier done in Hammer's truck, next we're going to work on the village hall. I don't think we're going to worry too much about the chapel. We have a shit ton of immigration as it is. We definitely have a shit ton of immigration. Statesman is more important than the soldiers. I'm going to pick up the rancher, the statesman, the carpenter, and the farmer. Send them back. Uh, does a carrick do in two turns? I can carry four people, so it'll carry the next four. We'll be alright. I don't think we need another ship quite yet, but maybe not too, too long. I have been kind of wondering whether or not I do want to keep the mixed tech on our good side, because I think they'd be valuable trading partners. I'm going to send this merchant man back north up to the Pearly Gates, and we got beat to a 20 colonist settlement. There's no way in hell we were reaching 20 colonists unless we wanted to just, like, dogpile Pearly Gates. Well, we could have done it, actually. Nah, we needed a better medic than we have at the moment. We probably could have pulled it off, though, for at least one turn. I just wasn't too concerned about it, really. That's kind of what happens when you, uh, you talk and you record in times that are kind of far apart. I just haven't really had a lot of time to record because of stuff coming up, you know. Gotta deal with real life and all that jazz. I uh, found the other Spanish settlement and it's over here. That is, of course, very well inland. The AI definitely likes their inland settlements. Ray was saying in the Discord that he modified the AI behavior for the next release. I could go ahead and download the current dev build to probably fix that behavior, but I think for the purposes of playing the current public release, I'll just stay with the dev build slightly ahead of 4.1, which with only a small number of changes. Uh, once again, the mixed tech, mixed tech have lost another city down here. The Spanish, well, attacking them caused them to get reinforcements from their king, so maybe not the best choice of helping out the uh, natives. But I wanted to try, I thought I could get away with it. Anyway, we've got a ship full of colonists ready to settle down somewhere. They need to go to Hammerstruck, I think. Or do they? Maybe Fort Cod would be the better choice because we have a proper master carpenter on board. Yeah, I think Fort Cod is going to be the way to go at first. We might send the expert farmer elsewhere, though. Alright, I offloaded a bunch of goods in Europe. I'm going to send this moving. ship on its way. And I'm actually kind of wondering if I should start getting into the good old privateer business here pretty soon. I think we can roll with a privateer by itself at first. We'll send it on its way. We can also go over to Port Royal and get some pirate frigates and such eventually. So, our warriors have been victorious in many battles during the last months and have taken many prisoners. Our wise men say that a hard winter is coming. We cannot feed more hungry mouths. Give us 840 gold and take them as slaves. We can buy some native slaves or say no. I, I don't think so. We have enough people. As it is, we don't need to worry about even more. Because they're going to come flooding in one way or another as the English. As long as you build some cross-producing buildings and staff them. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the Master Carpenter off the ship. Replace the basic free colonist with the Master Carpenter. Failed Trader works better as a Carpenter than the free colonist. We probably want to make him continue to work as a Carpenter. Or we could actually make him start doing pioneering. The thing about pioneering at the moment is that the Carib are angry with us. And because they're angry with us, they're probably going to attack us and start burning down our improvements, basically, as well as raiding our settlements in not too long. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to have the free colonists get back on the boat and have the brig go over to Hammerstruck to get some people we'll set up over there, and like the expert fishermen. 
unless we have a fishing resource that is not being properly utilized at the moment, and I don't think we do. Pearl Harbor's got quite a while until it actually gets some proper culture rolling, which is too bad. <laughs> this little pioneer here has finished building a lodge on this tile. I might build a road so I can more easily defend it. That's what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to build a road. Then after I get done with that road, I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to head to the northwest tunnel ship, catch a ride, and then build a mine on the mineral resources here so we can start mining silver. If we grab an expert prospector from Europe, we'll be able to get them working pretty rapidly on that. I do know that I have another expert prospector being trained over here somewhere in the desert. Yeah, over here in Mapuri, but that is like 40 turns away. That's way too long to wait. And expert, pro and, uh, expert prospectors, they're not that expensive. They're actually fairly cheap considering how much money they can make. We have the Jolly Roger. Gentlemen, the captain announces, the time has come. He heaves the small chest onto the chart table in his cabin. Curious, the officer, the officers watch as he breaks the seal. As soon as our port is out of sight, we're to open this. Those are the governor's orders. He flips open the lid and has to grin. Gentlemen, here is what will be on our flagpole. It's the skull and crossbones flag. And we have the wages of the servants. This must be related to indentured servants. Their life is no bed of roses. They do the heaviest work, hauling and toiling. But this bitter life will end after seven years. Back home, they freely signed a contract with their future employer. Now, in return for passage to the new world, they give up their right to a self-determined existence for seven years. Without complaint, they do everything their master deems necessary. And then, he grants them a small sum of money or gives them a farm which, though small, will be their own. In this way, indentured servants become free citizens. It was not a terrible deal, actually. You got a ride to the New World, and you got, and if you're lucky, you got like actual skills from your master. So you would actually learn. So we got a village market built in Pearl Harbor. I really, really want to get culture growth as fast as possible, so we're going to go for a tavern next. The tavern will also generate gold from the culture that we generate. And the chapel is done in Fort Cod, which means I can swap the preacher to doing his thing. We are negative on lumber now though, which is unfortunate. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to have to switch the coal miner over to lumber temporarily. That'll fix our carpentry income. And then let's go for a... I think we should go for a pier for more food from the water tiles so we can support more people here. Such as a proper lumber check. And then my lord, a small outpost of buccaneers has recently been destroyed by the fleet of another colonial power. The surviving buccaneers need a new place to live. They offer their loyalty to the first colonial nation that successfully builds a fleet of six ships sailing with hidden nationality. There's a lot. If we win them for our cause, they could be very useful. We'll see. And then we are challenged to trade 6,000 gems. That might be possible. That'll probably happen. Our caravel of all the guns has arrived in Pearl Harbor, and I'm going to send it elsewhere question is where unfortunately most of the villages very close to the Spanish have been taken out that were coastal so we can't get into with the mixed tech that way what I could do is I could just sell guns to Yadzoku and hope that that basically filters over to the west if I do this this does increase the power of the mixed tech significantly but I have already bought the guns and I do intend to sell them the only question is who do I sell them to an alternative is to sell them to somebody else, such as the Inuit. But I don't think the Inuit have any coastal villages. No, they don't. So attacking the French indirectly is not really a good possibility here. I think the best thing we can do is go ahead and arm the Mixtec, make them more powerful, and then work on trading posts and missionaries with them. So let's go over to Yadzoku and sell some guns. Get off my boat. Fisherman, do your thing, get us some food, very good indeed. Free colonist farmer might need to come out, get replaced with an actual farmer that can do some pretty good labor. Actually, you're pretty good at farm, rice farming, right? No, nah, not that much better than normal. So regular farming it is, now we produce plenty of food. I might have you train as something else, free colonist. The thing about training farmers through hard work is that unless it's like a bonus resource, you barely make enough food compared to what they do compared what they eat, I mean. We are net zero on health. Let me see if adding somebody worsens our health or not. 
It does not, so we can add one more maybe. I think we can add, we, I don't think we can add anybody else now. Oh, we can. Okay, cool. Let's have you do silver mining, although you've been a farmer recently. Let's have you do farming in the meantime, perhaps. The only issue is it'll take him so long. Maybe rice farming, actually. You can learn to do rice farming. I think that's a reasonable choice. Yeah, let's have him do rice farming. He'll mostly pay for himself in terms of food. And this guy will do some silver working temporarily. Actually, no, no, no. Let's have you do carpentry instead. You were learning carpentry, so we'll keep you on that. That makes us net negative on wood, but that's okay. We can ship some goods around. Little thing to mention here is that you get happiness from treaties with other Europeans as well. This does incentivize you to do things like get open borders with the Dutch, who do not for some reason want to get open borders with me. How about the Russians? Do you guys want to do it? Nah. So you can get treaties with other Europeans. They can outweigh like negatives from declaring war on other Europeans. Or just outweigh unhappiness from slaves or colonists in general. I went ahead and bought the expert prospector at the moment I got the money for it. Probably should always float at least 1500 gold, but it's not a big deal. We might want to get that. Maybe we got lucky. No, we got the free colonists. I was thinking about getting that native trader when I saw him on the screen. Could set up a trading post with a mixed tech. It's a good question as to whether or not the Spanish would take them out completely, though. Yeah, thinking about it, trading with the mixed tech makes the most sense. The Spanish are the closest proper threat, and anything that makes them weaker makes us stronger. Hey, hey, you got 18,000 gold. Actually, where? Oh, crap. Uh, ideally, I'm going to select a coastal colony that has a desire for guns, but unfortunately, she has lost most of her colonies that would pay a premium, but we're just going to accept it as it is. Well, you know what? I could put the guns onto the wagon train and then send the wagon train down to, say, to Zandaya. That would put the guns closer. But I think the AI kind of has this thing, at least the natives, where the guns get distributed from city to city. Because I've seen them pop up further away, but I could be wrong. Yeah, let's just make our money now. We'll sell the guns that we have. It would give us 1,475, which is pretty good. We bought them for 13 each in Europe. This means that we bought 7,800 gold worth of guns. We're going to make almost double our money. I accept your offer. Or I could bargain for a higher price. Now, we don't have better chances than the French of getting a better price in terms of success or failure. If we fail, we'll piss them off. And we'll receive like a malice to our relationship, which I don't want to do. So let's just accept. And we're not going to push our luck with that. Besides, we can just bring them more guns later on anyway, so they should still have... They have 3,830 gold, that's not a lot of money, but it is something. And in this mod, they do actually regenerate gold over time. So there is actually a reason to continue trading with the natives after they've given you all their money. And you know what, we've actually got enough gold on hand now that I'm going to get that second privateer and send them on their way over to the New World. So hopefully you can catch up to his friend and they can work together. I found out from a commenter that you can capture colonists using privateers as long as you have a ship that can carry passengers in the stack that the privateer attacks from. So that's pretty cool, I didn't know that. Hey, hey, we're up to 4% taxes, or we could destroy all the gems in Pearl Harbor and not be able to trade the good. No thanks, that's a lot of money, my friend. I accept your taxes, Europe. Now, as the tax rate does increase, it does negatively affect the happiness of your colonies. So you need to do things like supply domestic goods to increase their happiness. We got ourselves a free colonist here. We could train him to be a rice farmer as well. It would take him about almost 80 turns to walk to the colonies at the moment. But I doubt that we're going to have enough ship time available to do anything else with him in terms of like walk versus not walk. I want him to be an expert coffee planter actually. We do have, or was that a different game? Yeah, that was a different game actually, okay. We'll get him trained on the way back in something. I could train him in tobacco planting at this village here, but I want to use most of our grasslands for hemp production so we can make sail cloth and ropes. So that doesn't make sense to me. Expert trapper may not be actually an expert sugar planter. That might be what's up. Let's send him over there. Then he can learn how to plant sugar better since our special, unique master is actually a distiller after all. Hmm, okay, so I can't directly attack this settlement using my buccaneer. I guess I can find people in the surrounding 
environment and attack them that way. That we'll just have to do. Most of my next income probably needs to be spent on developing an attack force because I need to take the Carib on. They are getting very upset with me. They're damn near furious. So yeah, we'll assume that we'll start getting some heavy artillery for settlement attacks. This Buccaneer might get killed actually. A lot of my Buccaneers get killed by natives. Hey, he actually lives surprisingly enough. I already have another Elder Statesman over in Pearly Gates. I did not remember that. Like I was talking about, Chain of Thought but not. Unless I play consistently for days on end, I'll naturally forget where things are at. Let's take this Master Carpenter down to Mother of Pearl. I want them to build a medical office faster than they are at the moment. They're working very slowly. So we'll apply you instead of the Poultry Breeder. We'll take you out. Poultry Breeder, I think, will stay there because we can use these wetlands to grow goose, geese, in order to make down. Which is not a bad thing to use. You can use that to make a second, a tertiary manufactured good. Well, maybe it's called a, a secondary manufactured good. This farmer, though, it's a good question where I want to send him. The rancher, obviously, I want to go back up towards Pearly Gates, but this merchant man came out in between the two. I might want to set the older statesman up in... Well, Hammerstruck is actually about to have... And I can't fit them because of the free colonists. I could take one of the free colonists out, though. Like the one working carpentry temporarily. Or actually the one doing rice harvesting. I'll do that actually. So I'll send that ship that direction. We'll set up the outer statesman in Hammerstruck. And then maybe take the farmer over to Fort Cod over here. Nah, eh, probably not. Take the farmer and the rancher up north to Pearly Gates. Well, you know I want to use horses or hemp. Actually, maybe I want to do hemp instead right here. Now let's do hemp north of Pearly Gates. We need that hemp for rope and sailcloth, and there's not a lot of it super close by. Thinking that we need to found another settlement. Possibly, ooh, well, there's a little bit of wood in this light forest right here, but if I settle right here, I won't have access to much lumber. But that's probably the best location that we're going to get. So I should just go ahead and settle right there. Because this is, well, this is water, but I think because this is connected by land, diagonally, that this counts as being connected to this city, so proximity still matters. Because otherwise I might actually prefer, prefer to settle on the layer here, and then access the lumber. Because then we'll have the fish right here, and we want to worry too much about it, but that would also mean that we could not access the blueberries up here for fruit, to make fruit brandy from eventually. So we'll go ahead and we'll settle right there. I just need to bring some food down to Pearl Harbor. And we're actually kind of hurting for food unless it's going to come from the Pearly Gates. So we need to send one of these dudes up there like immediately to grab some food. We built a farm on the beams. What I'd like to do next with this hardy pioneer is probably build a plantation or something on the grassland here. Let's actually switch over production from horses to hemp. And I'd like to get a hemp improving building. I think it's a plantation. We'll start doing that there so that we can start setting up some sailcloth and rope production. Which we absolutely do need. Yep, there goes the buccaneer. Dead. Typically the buccaneers, in my experience, they just get murdered by the natives. Even if you're kind of careful about moving around, eventually you're going to get killed by a native. We got that village hall done in Hammerstruck. Next up, we might want to just focus on culture production. Or perhaps a Chevro de Free to protect us. Yeah, let's do the defensive walls first, and then we'll go from there. Same thing for over here. Actually, we need to build a village hall first, and then we'll get a defensive wall. Offering some slaves? No thanks. I don't want any. This poor free colonist cannot catch a break. He's just popping from job to job. No idea what he's going to do with his life. Could train him in hemp planting. Take him up to Pearly Gates, have him start on that. I'm taking a quick look around the coast to see if there's anybody that might train hemp. But it does not look like there is anybody that does that. So yeah, he's just going to have to learn through hard work. I think I might want this expert farmer to be a settler or to join the next colony. There's not really a place for him in any of the current colonies. Although he could produce some food in Pearl Harbor once he gets big enough in terms of boundaries. But I can't add him to Pearl Harbor without adding food to Pearl Harbor. 
We'll just go ahead and head back to Pearly Gates and drop off the rancher and the free colonists to get them doing their thing sooner rather than later. We'll deal with the expert farmer at some point later in time. Hey, the Danes are actually doing their thing, building fishing boats and taking advantage of the seas. It's nice to see. There was another fishing boat up north on this mackerel resource. I do feel like the different AIs seem to prefer to do things the way that their civilizations should do it. Like, I can't say with 100% certainty that that's the case, that there, is an, that there is an individual AI for each kind of colony, but that's just the feeling that I get. Right, we got 6,000 gold. Let's see how expensive a veteran heavy artillery is. Ooh, 5,760. I'll take that. So you need heavy artillery for attacking settlements. Light artillery is better for defending settlements. Dragoons are good for open terrain. Town guards are a basic melee defensive unit. Lion infantry is better than colonial militia by quite a bit. And then cavalry is better than dragoons. Oh yeah, by the way, if you build missions and trading posts with the AI, the United natives, you'll actually improve your relationship with them. So something to consider if you want to stay peaceful. Sadly, we can't finish this church right now because we need the stone, which we completely lack, and the clay which we completely lack. You might want to go ahead and put some stuff on a galleon and bring it back over here. We are producing some clay, but not a whole lot of clay. We're going to have to up that production and we're also going to have to start a stone production. I don't think we have any source of stone production at the moment. We don't need a defensive structure here. What do we want to build next? Notice here we can build coastal ships. These are stuck to the coast. We should also be able to build, yeah, we can build fishing boats. They're actually recommending we build fishing boats. You need 30 rope, 60 cell cloth, and 60 tools. The issue with that is that they can lose to animals. There's a lot of animals in our oceans. Looking at the colony, I think that what we're going to go with is we're going to go with a powder maker house. This is going to take a while to build, but that's okay. Gunpowder is really important for like all military units that use any kind of rifle or cannon. That includes ships. The Dutch want 80 gold. Sure. Maybe now you'll accept some... No, you won't do open borders. Why is that? Sadly, a well-known nobleman has lost his mind. Against all sense of reality, he talks about how all men are created equal. We have decided that it is best that he disappears from our sight. We would be grateful if you would support us in this matter. He needed 7,138 gold to start a new life in the new world. Well, this is a political refugee. Actually, or maybe this is an actual noble, like a noble noble, like a, not a governor? I think that's a specific unit for this. They're pretty good. Sadly, I don't have the money. That is one reason to float a decent amount of money is for quests like that. Events like that, I mean. Our privateer has arrived in the new world. I'm going to have him actually chill out and wait for his buddy to arrive. And then after that, they're going to sail south and go pay the Spanish a little visit. Alright, we're going to take food from Parley Gates. We need it for founding settlements because we don't have the tolls here to found to make settlers. We've got to take that down south to Pearl Harbor. We're going to take the free colonists down south too and maybe the master train oil cooker. This dude really doesn't find much use. Yeah, let's take him down south as well take him off the island. Alright, we've entered trade negotiations with the chief of New Tnu of the mixed tech they don't want to sell us our the guns that we sold them these guns have actually moved around from village to village so that's nice to know there's not much that we could buy from them we could buy their food but they want to sell it for about 2.9 gold per food that's not bad considering that in europe you can buy it for 10 gold and effectively that that much food is about i think close to halfway to making a new colonist Something around there. I have also heard of people doing things like selling food in Africa. Here we could double our money selling to Africa, which is reasonable considering like how much gold is necessary. We'd make 800 gold, but that's really not that much. I don't think that's a sensible choice. I think we'll just not trade with the mixed tech. I've checked out some of the options and I'm not very impressed. We'll check out what this other village has got going on, but I don't expect it to be much different. So trading with them would be better if we have proper trading posts that will generate gold over time. And those are actually pretty cheap to set up. They only use trade goods, 
so like 300 gold, 300 trade goods to equip a native trader, which is 900 gold from Europe. I might want to start doing that with a lot of these people, because I got so many people like just standing around. The great picker, the miniature I want, the expert miner I want. I mean, they're all people that I want or that I can't make into missionaries or traders. But I am starting to get like a surplus of free colonists just hanging around with not much to do. So I might start bringing back some trade goods or making use of the provisions that I have on hand for some missionaries. Anyway, our galleon with a bunch of gold has arrived. We're going to sell all the gold and pick up some full load of clay, full load of stone. We will positively make use of that. And then we've got enough provisions at home to equip a missionary. And I think I want to do missionaries before I do pioneers because of the war with the Carib. How long is it until the ship arrives here? Five turns until the brig gets here. We need another passenger ship, I think. So let's grab another passenger ship. I want something with a, a decent sized cargo hold, but not too expensive. Let's actually ask the king and see if the king would have... No, thank you. No, I'm not doing that. You know, actually, you're all, you're all next to the French. But the French are much less likely to actually attack the natives, so not too concerned about them. But they will do it. They will absolutely do it. Hey, the king is actually happier for us. Maybe he'll give us a better discount. A frigate for 11,388 gold. That's a pretty good discount. Only issue is I really wanted a passenger ship. So I'm not... Well, no. We'll probably get a frigate through other means. So I'm not too concerned about that. It'd be pretty cool if I could get another West India man. Let's do that. West India men are fantastic. I do want to consider bringing back some goods to sell in the domestic market since I'm not producing very many goods to sell. Like rum right now, I could buy it for 12 in Europe, but then I can sell it for 23 in Pearly Gates. There's demand for three of those, which is very nice. Domestic prices go up as happiness goes up, and as you sell goods in the dom domestic market, you produce happiness points, so it, it kind of feeds on itself. Let's see, they probably also want, you know, they want coats. They really want leather lined coats, but that's not a double increase of money. I want to find something that I can make the most bang for my buck. Salt, they want 19. Buy for, they want 6. You can buy it for 12 in Europe. No, nah, it's not good. I think rum might be the way to go. We're actually selling 2 furniture per turn in Pearly Gates. That's nice to see. It's a very good domestic price. Let me actually take a look at my other colonies real quick and see if they have any demand yet for furniture. I don't think they do. Pearly Gates is just more developed. As the colony develops and gets more colonists of higher specialties and such, they'll demand more expensive goods. I could double my money importing coffee. They want six per turn. That's a lot. The real question is, does anybody else want coffee in my other settlements? Coffee is demanded in some of my other settlements. But the domestic price is not yet that high, simply because I think the happiness is not that high. A whole hole on demand for coffee elsewhere. And I think I just need to focus purely on not making my people happy, but let's go to Hammerstruck, I think. Well, maybe, no, let's go to Pearl Harbor. Not making my people happy, but killing the Carib. That's what we need to focus on. So this free colonist, what am I going to do with you? I could make you a soldier. But what we really, really need is we need another uh, veteran heavy artillerist. But I could get by only 6,000 gold. I'll take that. Yes, please. So yeah, I can grab the prospector for the silver and hammer struck. Free colonist, you're probably going to end up being a missionary. I've got some other free colonists hanging around that I can turn to missionaries like that dude training rice farming. That's fine. I think I can just, we should probably leave him where he is. And we've got a native trader here for developing a proper trading post, so that's great. And our two privateers are ready. They're combined up now. Now I could have a merchant ship with them or passenger vessel to capture colonists that get captured from our victims. But I don't think I want to wait that long until I have a ship ready to back them up. I'd rather go harass the Spanish right now. Alright, now I'm going to have to take another instantaneous break. My headphones are about to die and it is late, so I cannot exactly charge them rapidly enough to play again tonight. So I'll see you 
right after this instant, basically. Hey, we're back. Hopefully my microphone will sound better now than it was before. It's been having some issues, I've been having problems solving, basically. Let's continue onwards. We're definitely hoping to beat down on the Spanish a little bit for our privateers here pretty soon. <laughs> 